Using DAOs for joinery can be intimidating the first time you do it. In this video, I'll share with you what I learned when using DAO joinery to assemble this small hallway table carcass on Bud's workshop. There are many ways to join wood together. You could use pocket holes, mortise and tenon, biscuits, dominoes, gluing clamp, lots of different ways. In this particular project, I decided to use these little dowel pins as my main joinery technique because I've never done that on a project. And as a result, I'd like to share with you three rules that I discovered along the way that'll help you be successful the first time you do dowel joinery. Before we get started, let's talk about a basic tool that you're going to want to get. You're going to want to get some sort of jig. You can spend anywhere from $25 to a couple hundred dollars on jigs. I recommend you get something basic just to get started uh, before you go and invest a whole lot of money. I use this basic Miles Craft jig uh, that I got at my local A store. I think I paid around $25 for it. And we'll take a quick look at what comes in the kit. So this kit comes with everything you need to get started. It comes with the jig and a guide fence that you can slide on here so that you can, you can align where you're going to put your holes. Uh, it comes with brad point bits, three different sizes, 3 8 5 16 and quarter inch, as well as some depth collars that you can slide on here and attach to the drill bit to make sure you don't drill too deep. And it also comes with an assortment of dowel pins, like I said, quarter inch, 5 16 and 3 8 some centering pins, which I didn't use for this project, but I could see them coming in handy for future projects, and then a sample bottle of wood glue. I put a link to this kit in the description in case you're interested in seeing exactly which one I used. So let's jump into the first rule. My first rule that I came up with is accuracy is key. And the jig that I just showed you is what's gonna help me get that accuracy. The adage of measure twice, cut once, doesn't really apply here. Because the reality is, I had to measure three times. I had to do a bunch of clamping, and then I had to re-measure, and then do a little bit more clamping before I was able to drill once and get it right. So I'm gonna show you some examples how to use the jig and how to be accurate using it. For this jig, there are two basic ways you can use it. You can use the posts on the jig to find the center of the board by turning the jig so that one post is on each side of the board. This gives you a perfect center, as you can see in the example here. Now just drill your hole through that center hole. Another way you can do this is to use the adjustable fence and set your depth. In scenarios like you see here, the fence is necessary since I'm working at the end of the board to create a butt joint. The post wouldn't have anything to grab onto because I run out of board as I'm working on the end. I, re I even went as far as to clamp the fence to the board so it wouldn't shift. Once again, hoping to make sure that my first drill is accurate. You'll notice in this example I've marked the center line of the table leg. Even though I preset the fence to the correct depth, I can look down through the hole in the jig to make sure that my line is coming through the center of the hole. It's just a second measure, and it's a way to make sure I'm accurate. Then it's just a matter of lining up with the pin in the corresponding piece to ensure my holes line up correctly. Now for the second rule, dowel size matters. Ideally, the diameter of the dowel should be approximately a third to never more than a half inch of the thickness of the piece of wood being joined. If you undersize a dowel, you'll have less glue surface and won't have the optimal joint strength you need. This chart shows the recommended dowel sizes you should use for the various wood thicknesses. When doing this butt joint, I chose to use a 3 8 inch dowel in a 3 quarter inch board. I chose this size to maximize the strength in this small joint. And now for the third and final rule. Consider dowel placement. Before you start drilling, think through all of your needs. I learned this one the hard way. Let me show you what I mean. When drilling the holes in the legs for the bottom of my stringers, I ran into a problem because they were not offset. As a result, the dowel pins hit each other when I did my dry fit, keeping me from getting a tight joint. I could have drilled the holes deeper in the stringer, 
but I chose instead to shorten the dowel pins on one of the, each of the stringers as it was easier for me to do at the time. Had I thought this through, I would have offset the holes. When making my frames, I made the decision to push two dowel pins to one side. So in this example here, I put my dowel pins approximately here, primarily because I had to cut a rabbit on the inside of this board and didn't want to cut into the dowel pins. This, is, this rabbit's going to house a panel on the sides and the back of this, this hallway table. It may not have been the end of the world, but I figured why risk it. So there you have it. Three basic rules for success. Accuracy is key. Dow size matters. And consider your placement. If you found this video helpful, please smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you get alerted whenever I have new content come out.